Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Donna Lascalia, and I'm the Director of Public Works for the City of Northampton. Um, and we are here to discuss the reconstruction of Warfield Place. Um, I'm actually recording this meeting and that way for those folks who are not able to make it and who may have uh, questions or want to hear what we talked about, um, we'll be able to send them the video link to it. Um, so that's just a, a courtesy to folks in the neighborhood who may not have been able to make this meeting. So um, as I mentioned, my name is Donna and I'm the Director of Public Works and I'm joined today by Rich Parcelletti. He is the city's Superintendent of Forestry, Parks and Cemetery and also the, uh, the city's tree warden. Um, and I'm also joined by Cindy Quinn, who's the DPW's administration manager. Uh, you may have uh, spoken to her uh, either by phone or over email, and she's here to help us facilitate the meeting. Um, so we did uh, extend uh, invitations to, I, I, I think, a, a lengthy guest list and, um, and also to your ward counselor, um, who I would expect to be joining us. Um, it, it's, it is uh, 2.03, but uh, still early. Um, so with that being said, what I would like to do is give everyone a very brief overview of the project, um, go into a, a little bit more detail than was in my letter, which you may have received, and uh, answer some of the questions which uh, you uh, thoughtfully submitted to us and then Rich will speak in, in a little bit more detail about the trees. Um, so I will talk about the project, Rich will talk about the trees, um, and then what we will do is um, hopefully that'll satisfy a lot of uh, the questions that have been submitted to us and then we will open it up for any comments that you may have or, or questions that you feel that we have not answered. Um, and the, the purpose of this meeting um, is it, first it, it was requested of us, but we want to hear what you have to say and um, you know we will take everyone's uh, comments comments under advisement uh, as we decide how to move forward here. So um, without further ado, I, I will kind of, uh, here's this, looks like Councillor Quinlan is joining us right now. So Councillor, thanks for joining us, appreciate it. Um, okay, so with, with, with that being said, um, let me kind of just jump right into what, what we're trying to accomplish here. So the paving of Warfield Place is part of the city's 2021 paving project package. So each year we assess the streets that are in the worst condition and we bundle what we can together based on funding and, and sort of our operational considerations. And uh, we put that package out to bid and we hire a contractor, typically Warner Brothers or Palmer Paving, one of the large contractors in Western Massachusetts. And they come in and they spend several months going through the city uh, repaving streets. So one of the questions that we received was why Warfield Place? Warfield Place is in poor condition. Um, and when we assess all of the streets, we determine, you know, which streets are in the worst condition. And Warfield Place has been identified as one of the streets in the most poor condition. So when we think about what streets we want to deal with, obviously, um, you know, we're, we're trying to hit the, uh, the main offenders um, and Warfield Place is one. So um, our goal is to come through and resurface that street. Now we have regulation, we, we, DPW lives in a land of regulation. So anytime we come in and we're going to resurface a street, we are required by federal regulation to address the condition of the sidewalks. Um, and we have to ensure that the sidewalks are ADA compliant. That's a regulation. It's, it's not our choice. So one of the questions that I received is, you know, where do these sidewalks rank in the Alta inventory? And what I can tell you is they don't rank especially high relative to other sidewalks in the city that are in poor condition. However, the street is in poor condition and we must address all infrastructure is part of any reconstruction project that we do. It would not be a responsible use of, of the city's money to come in and sort of do these projects piecemeal. Um, so when we assess the condition of the sidewalks, we find that they are not ADA compliant. So as part of any repaving project that we do on Warfield Place, outside of just 
patching, you know, a pothole or something, uh, we are obligated to address the condition of the sidewalks. So we must make them ADA compliant. The ADA compliant sidewalk is 60 inches wide and has ADA compliant ramps. So those conditions do not currently exist in any of the sidewalks on Warfield Place. So in order for us to come through and pave the street, we must address the sidewalk. And that's kind of just the, the way it goes. Um, so with that being said, when, when we look at the sidewalks, we find that they are heaved by the tree roots and we'll get into this in a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, and, and so it, you know, though these sidewalks don't necessarily rise to the top of any list as a discrete project, um, they're still in poor condition overall and they do need attention. So I used the word reclaim earlier to talk about the pavement process that needs to happen to reconstruct Warfield Place. So what reclaim means is that we need to entirely reconstruct the roadway. So what we need to do is dig down at least 12 inches in the road and remove all of the material that's there and bring in uh, reclaimed material or brand new material and then make a new road surface uh, or a new road base rather, and then resurface on top of that. So it's a fairly significant reconstruction that this street needs. Um, it is not inexpensive. And um, you know, it's something that requires a, a certain amount of engineering and planning. Um, and when we do sidewalks, uh, a similar scenario unfolds. We have to excavate down 12 inches for the sidewalk. So we're looking at 12 inches for the roadway, 12 inches for the sidewalk. So significant amount of, of reconstruction and excavation that needs to happen here. Um, so, you know, the overall assets on the street, the road, the sidewalk, the trees, the fire hydrants, the drainage, all assets under the care and custody of DPW. So anything that we are going to do here, we need to do it kind of as a package. We never want to take a large project like this and do it piecemeal. It, that, that would be a, a, an absolutely irresponsible use of, of the city's uh, money, utility money. So when we look at a street that's in poor condition, we have to figure out why is it in poor condition? Is there a drainage problem? Is there some other utility problem? And we come in and we come in and we do everything simultaneously. Mobilization costs for a contractor are actually a large percentage of any contract that we sign. So just to get the contractor to show up can be between 10 and $20,000 by the time they truck all of their vehicles and equipment in. So we don't want to like do one thing and then sort of have them go away and then come back six months later and do something else or say, oh, you know, let's fix, you know, this thing this year. And then two years from now, we'll come back and fix something else. Like, like it, it's it's very much a waste of money. So so what we want to do is everything simultaneously. So as we examined what we needed to do to reconstruct this roadway, what we found um, in our assessment, and again we have to assess all assets simultaneously as we plan a project. So we looked very carefully at the trees, which are a city asset on this roadway. And again, Rich will talk in a little more detail about this. But what we found was that. Um, the, tree, the cherry trees in question were in poor condition. And we are trying to forward think what is this streetscape going to look like in five years? And when we identify city assets that are at the end of their lives, and these trees, make no mistake, are at the end of their lives, um, whether they look to be or not, um, we are obligated to address that. If I'm on a street and I, I say, well, you know, maybe that fire hydrant can last three more years, you know, so I'll just sort of leave it there, you know, until it fails and then I'll deal with it. Again, not a responsible use of the city's resources. So what we determined in assessing this, this streetscape is that in order to affect sort of the most bang for our buck and be forward thinking and think about what is this street going to look like in 10 years, that's why we have brought forth the proposal to you that we have, because we want to make sure that we are planning for the future, knowing that these trees are at the end of their service life. 
And if you take that sort of a step further and think, well, you know, let's see if we can sort of work around these. We have to excavate down 12 inches for the road. We have to excavate down 12 inches for the sidewalk. We're working with a less than 40 inch tree belt where these trees are very crowded. Their roots are heaving through and do the level of construction that we need to do. That will be the final death knell for these trees. So we can't work around them. Um, because, you know, what will end up happening is, you know, in a couple of years, the trees will be completely dead and their city assets, which means the city is responsible for them, which means we have to come in and cut them down. Now we have stumps in the middle of a tree belt between a new road and a new sidewalk, both of which will be damaged by us trying to extract the tree. So I think that um, is my answer to so several other questions that I got, you know, why can't you just work around the trees? And that's the answer to why we can't work around them. Um, so with all of that being said, that's sort of my executive summary. And, and I've tried to kind of hit on some of the questions that were directed to us. And, and I hope I have successfully answered some of them. Um, and now what I'll do is turn this over to Rich to speak uh, in a little more detail uh, about his assessment of these trees and, and, um, and, and his thoughts on this project. Thanks, Rich. Uh, Donna, thank you for that, uh, for, for, um, for, your, for the information that you gave. So I, I spent a little time um, <clears throat> on Warfield Place today and uh, in the past. So I've been kind of monitoring these trees off and on for the last uh, six years since I was a tree warden. So, you know, without any construction happening, the present condition of these trees, there's eight cherry trees. One is in critical condition. The other uh, seven are in poor condition. Um, and there's one red bud at the very end of the street uh, next to 153 Prospect that is in critical condition that was actually damaged by a trash truck. We think by a trash truck where it ripped off uh, one half of the tree. Um, so now there's only one uh, co-dominant stem left, which is kind of leaning over the sidewalk. So um, what I, you know, in, in um, critical condition means a tree that really is, is a tree that's in such poor condition that it could fail at any given time. Uh, poor condition resembles trees that are in poor condition that have uh, canopy dieback, dead wood in the canopy, um, and cavities in, inside the trunk or inside of the leader. So all of these trees have a level of decay in them that, um, in my opinion, is uh, normal for their age. These trees are old. Um, they've been there, been there for a long time. I don't know. I ran into someone there at Warfield Place today that said the trees were planted by a gentleman who used to live in six Warfield. So I would say that those trees at least are probably 30 years old, maybe, I'm guessing. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but I think, um, I think the, the issue, and Donna spoke to it, the issue is, is that when we go to do the construction, the impact of uh, the construction on the, the root systems of these trees will be the death knell. That is an actual, that's a great way to put it, unfortunately because of the fact that you're gonna be cutting um, all the viable roots that have migrated underneath the sidewalk. Um, you're also gonna be disturbing the existing tree belt um, where the roots are. So if you picture um, sort of like an envelope, um, a regular standard envelope, that's kind of the sidewalk. The sidewalk's about two and, a, two and a half feet wide. So tree roots typically will take up as much space as they possibly can in that particular rectangular box or the envelope. When they reach a certain point, they end up trying to find other places to go to, which is where you see the roots going underneath the sidewalk. So now what's happened is that a lot of the trees have anchor roots that actually go underneath the sidewalks. And what I mean by anchor roots um, is that they are roots that actually structurally hold the tree up. So if the anchor roots are severed because they are really at the top of the um, soil profile, then what's gonna happen is those trees will be subject to, um, to, to wind failure or to load failure, where they will actually be like a whole tree failure. So, the so without doing any construction, these trees are unfortunately um, are very, um, they're old and they have a lot of decay in them and they're they just gonna end up dying um, um, slowly, but they are actually severely rotted in some of them. So. You know, and you know, if these trees were in the middle of the woods, 
this we wouldn't be having this conversation because trees that are in the middle of the woods actually just kind of die and decay and they return naturally back to the ground. But it, these, uh, these trees are actually over parked cars. They're in the front of people's houses. Um, so there is a whole risk assessment that goes with the, the, uh, the condition of the trees. So um, there is the one tree that's, there is a one cherry tree at the very end by Seven Warfare Place that is the best tree that is in fair condition. But all the rest of them are either in poor or critical condition. And that's really my quick assessment. Thanks, Rich. I appreciate that. Um, and and I will add that you know there are, uh, gosh, close to to probably twelve thousand public shade trees in the city um, at, at this point, with more being um, planted um, by by quite a team of of volunteers. Um, but with that being said, the city is responsible for each of them, and we are responsible for them with a four man tree crew. That's that's what we have. That's what Rich controls as part of his operation. Um, so, you know, for every call we field about, um, you know, there's a branch hanging over whatever, or this tree doesn't look so good, it might be dying. Um, you know, we have to sort of allocate our internal resources and address, you know, what we see as the most uh, dangerous uh, place or dangerous thing as we can with just four people. Um, so, you know, when you think about the scale of, of our responsibility, and then you think about a project like this, where we know that this road needs to be paved, the sidewalk needs to be reconstructed, the trees are at the end of their lives. If we come through and do this project, um, you know, and try to work around the trees, it's not going to work. Um, I think you can understand that the city is in a position where we have to make decisions, um, you know, based on many, many factors. Um, and, and that's why we are proposing what we are proposing. And, and ultimately, the city does have responsibility for these trees um, and, and to ensure the safety of those who are, you know, living and parking and, and walking around them like every other tree in the city. Um, so that's just kind of a, a corollary to Rich's comments. So um, I think that it, at this point, uh, what I would like to do is, is sort of open this up to anybody who's on the call to uh, ask us more questions if you have them or to, um, you know, whatever comments you may have, you're welcome to. Um, probably the easiest way to do this is to use the raise hand feature if you are familiar with um, uh, that um, and we can unmute you and call on you that way. Um, you, it, it's a little difficult. I've got a screen full of people here. So if, if you like physically wave it, it might be hard for me to see you. So, um, so anyway, I see the first person with their hand up is Oliver. So we will unmute you if you can just tell us um, your name and, and where you live, that would be really helpful. And, and um, let me know what Hi. we can do for you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we sure I'm, can. So I'm at 2 Warfield, Oliver Kelhammer. Yeah, so um, I, I have some, some real criticisms about this from a design point of view. I mean, I know you use the word forward thinking, but there's no mention of climate change. We see massive amounts of stormwater runoff on the street. And, you know, this is a great opportunity for things like porous paving, you know, to mitigate. That would be forward thinking. And trees of that size contribute 10 degrees Fahrenheit in cooling to the local environment. So climate change is a driving parameter for all urban design right now. And I see no mention of that. And the other uh, criticism I have is the traffic calming. If, if the tree needs, if, if the uh, uh, street needs to be repaved, let's look at slowing down vehicles. Let's, let's look at getting people out of their vehicles. Right now, people tear around that, uh, corner, you know, to kind of cut the corner uh, between uh, Finn and Prospect. I, I see nothing in this plan about traffic calming. Why not speed bumps? Why not porous pavement? That's forward thinking. Now, these trees are 50-year-old cherry trees. I see 400-year-old cherry trees. Granted, they need maintenance. Granted, that's an issue, but we can do that. I mean, in New York, they have citizen pruners who are uh, deputized by the city to maintain trees because of the staffing problems. That's something we could do here. Those are not tall trees. Nobody's gonna get killed by one of those trees. They're like 20 foot trees. They're not, you know, 70 foot trees. They're, uh, 
old, but they also provide uh, cavities for uh, cavity nesting birds, so urban biodiversity benefits for them. So they are a key piece of infrastructure. They're not just, they're assets in more than just a sort of material way. They're assets in, in a sort of aesthetic way as well. They, they give the, the block character. So even if you replace the trees, you're gonna take like at least you know, 20 years to get anything in terms of the same amount of canopy. And then we're gonna have the same problem again. So I think this is a, a you said that, um, uh, piecemeal design is not is not an option. I think this is a great idea here for piecemeal design. This could be incremental design. We do one thing at a time, and it's a small street. And I think we can uh, we can do that in in, in chunks and, and give these trees a few more decades to live out their their lives with with some loving care. Okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Next is Liz. Uh, Hi. Um, so aren't there streets in Northampton that don't have sidewalks? Why can't North uh, Warfield Place be one of those streets? I, I can't really see why we need sidewalks. Um, there's like, no, it, it, it's like, it, the street is so incredibly small. There's no reason to do that. If you didn't replace the sidewalks, then you wouldn't need to care about the cherry trees because you wouldn't have to dig a foot down. All you would need to do is replace the street. It, okay, and so I, what I will say to that is, is that um, the city can't come through and remove all sidewalks in a street. Um, We're not you know. asking you to remove them. We're just asking you not to build new ones. And there are streets in Northampton that don't have sidewalks. So why can't Warfield Place be one of those streets? Yeah, I, I, I understand your question. And from the city standpoint, um, again, we have ADA requirements that we have to adhere to. So there is- So, so wait, these other streets, that it doesn't matter? The ADA doesn't matter? I mean- it, Right, so it matters when we're reconstructing the street. Okay, so don't, I, I, I mean, so if you don't touch these sidewalks, then it can be like these other streets that are not ADA compliant, and right. especially these streets that do not have sidewalks at all. Um, right, so if we reconstruct the street, we must reconstruct the sidewalk. If we don't reconstruct the street, um, you know, the sidewalk is in poor condition and at some point will have to be addressed, uh, just like the street will have to be addressed at some point. So they, they are not mutually exclusive. They are tied together. Uh, the street and the sidewalk are tied together. That really does seem. Uh, it's actually a fed, it's a federal <laughs> it's a federal law, and it's actually a city ordinance. So then, why are some streets exempt? Uh, they're not exempt. So why do some streets not have sidewalks? Because they have not been reconstructed. <laughs> okay, this is starting to be a little bit Kafka s. So. Um, so when are you going to get to those streets? It seems like a street without a sidewalk at all should be higher up on your list than a street with a usable sidewalk. So I think what I, what I would like to do here, just in the interest of time, is I, I want to give people who would like an opportunity to speak that opportunity to. I try to respond, you know, briefly when I can. Um, you know, philosophical questions about street paving, I, I certainly appreciate and I'm happy to talk to everybody um, I, about that. Um, but I, I do need to be careful with time here and make sure that that everybody has an opportunity to speak. So um, I, I certainly hear your questions philosophically about other streets, but we're, we're speaking about Warfield and, and we have to keep 
we have to keep sort of on task here so so that you so that everyone has an opportunity so i think um where i'm gonna move along um to to the next person and i can certainly follow up with you after this meeting if if you have questions about other streets um but again this street has been identified as in need of pavement treatment this is one of the worst streets in the city pavement wise, and that makes us obligated to touch the sidewalk, irrespective of any other streets who that don't have sidewalks. That that is the, the street and the sidewalk are linked together. And, and that is the explanation. So I, I, I hope that, that that that's clear. Thank you. Okay, next is Lois. Donna, can I just mention to you that we do have someone who's been trying to raise their hand for a while, so we want to keep them in mind. Um, okay. Can't All right. Sure. Um, let's just go with uh, Lois, who is next. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, I have, I mean, one thing about uh, the trees uh, killing somebody, uh, <clears throat> I, um, my uh, window, uh, in my, my kitchen window looks, I live at five Warfield Place, looks directly at all of the trees on, on Warfield Place, not at the far end, but quite a few of them. And the thing about these trees is, is that even in big windstorms, they don't move. I mean, they are incredibly sturdy trees. They're not like, um, I don't know, a big maple tree or something like that. So this idea that they're going to you know, cause damage to people walking on the street. I mean, first I have to say, for people that have been on Warfield Place, you say you've been on it, there's, there are almost no pedestrians on the street. It's a tiny street with basically no pedestrian traffic or even hardly any car traffic. Um, so, I mean, in terms of their danger to people or houses, I mean, this sounds completely... Um, overblown and also just completely not uh, tied to the reality of these particular trees. They're not, you know, 30 foot trees or 40 foot trees. They're whatever foot they are, 15 feet? I don't know, maybe somebody knows. Um, the other thing is, I mean, I do think, uh, I mean, one, I've, I've lived on this street for 23 years and um, I have tried, called the DPW numerous times trying to get the DPW to take care of these trees, which the DPW, I remember one time the DPW coming and trimming some of the trees and not even enough as much as we asked them to so that they wouldn't be vulnerable to um, trucks, garbage trucks, especially coming down the street. And that's, that's in my, my entire time of, of living here. Do I remember that? And that was after many, many calls. So to say that the trees are in bad shape and now the, the DPW response to them is to cut them down uh, seems, uh, I mean, odd, absurd, weird. Um, anyway, um, the other thing is uh, just in terms of uh, cost. I mean, it seems like a completely irresponsible use of money. Um, if, if, the city is so concerned about the, the street. I would say the city should come and patch some of the huge holes that are in the street rather than dig up the entire street, the entire sidewalk, cut all the trees down because the city has deemed this to be a, a really bad street for the, I don't know, 20 cars that drive up and down it during the course of a day. I mean, we could probably monitor the number of cars. That, I mean, there are more now, more trucks, but uh, I mean, very few. I mean, this, this is a street that basically is used by the people that live on the street. And so it seems just like a huge, huge uh, waste of money. And um, in a way, like a, a problem that you've diagnosed with this absolutely extreme uh, solution. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, I will add, I just noticed something in the chat. Um, it, it's uh, tricky for me to listen and read the chat simultaneously, but um, why not put the new sidewalk on the other side? And uh, what I will say to that is, is that is actually something that we did ponder. 
Um, and the reason that we determined that that was not a good solution is because, again, the trees that we are talking about are at the end of their lives. So if we were to put the sidewalk on the other side of the street, what happens is you, uh, you end up with um, dying trees on one side of the street, no tree belt available on the other side of the street. Um, and, and you sort of and you end up with this kind of segmented project where we have to return and, and you know, start digging out, um, you know, things which which have died, which we knew were going to die. Um, and again, it just ends up costing more money and requiring a, a remobilization. So that's um, the answer to to that question. Um, OK, next, I think Ter is Terry. Cindy, do you want to uh, unmute Terry here? Hi. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you for doing this, Donna. This is great. Um, I appreciate you pulling your people together so quickly. Um, we have a couple of questions. So is there a way to replace the cherry trees with cherry trees? Can anybody can you hear? I don't know. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, it, sorry. Yeah, and we can. I'm sorry. So go ahead. Is there a way to replace the cherry trees? Yeah. So you're, trees? if you're going to take out the cherry trees, can you replace them with cherry trees rather than something that grows kind of bigger than what we are, are used to? Um, it'll that way we can avoid going into the wires. Yeah. Let me. I'm gonna. Um, that's one of the things that Rich would work with the neighborhood on. So I'm gonna actually punt that question to Rich and just let him speak to kind of the suitability of, of what may be able to, to be planted there. Rich, if you wouldn't mind just responding to that. Sure, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question, Terry. Yes, we, we can replace them with, um, we call them un, an underwire cherry um, that um, would probably grow about 20 feet tall by about 20 to 25 feet wide. Again, depending upon the available growing um, medium that's left there after the new sidewalk is installed would depend upon um, how much the spacing of the trees basically, because you have to allow for a tree that has um, a 10 foot wide diam diameter canopy, you have to have at least 120 cubic feet of soil volume to support that. So we'd have to look at that, but that is definitely something that could probably be done um, plus, there could be trees planted on the other side of the street as well, because there they, there'll be a much larger tree belt on the other side of the street. Well, th those are some of my other questions. Um, what is the size of the tree belt left on the north side versus the south side? I'm having trouble envisioning what the south side is going to look like without a tree, you know, without a sidewalk. Yeah, that that right away is actually going to become quite wide there and and certainly um, much more significant than the really tight strip that exists where the cherries already are, I think, which is about 40 inches. Um, so I think that we're going to have a, probably a pretty good width to work with um, once that sidewalk is removed on that side um, and, and certainly something that would be able to support a, a good planting. Okay, so are the current sidewalks gonna, I guess, invade our lawn more or? No, the, the, no. the project is not changing the footprint of anything. It's, okay. it's so okay. the, the edge of the sidewalk is where it is and it's not moving. And we will, I, and, and I'm sorry, I did not answer this question earlier, but one of the questions that was submitted to me is, you know, how will we marry um, you know, the new sidewalk or the new pavement. And we deal with this on reconstruction projects all over the city. We, we move through each, each property and we marry existing walkways and existing driveways to our new construction. And, and we make sure that the, the slopes are appropriate. We make sure that, that, you know, the drainage is appropriate, you know, and, and sometimes we have to creep into people's driveways in order to do that. Um, but we, we always make sure that that um that it, it's a nice product when we're done okay and i you know I, I for one think the street needs to be repaved it's it's a mess and it's been patched a few times and this you know with the big trucks that go up and down um it is to me a highly traffic street people do cut through all the time um i'm on the repave side i know that's not popular but i think it needs to be done um patching it is just it's just going to pop up holes elsewhere 
Um, we also heard that there's going to be a street light at the corner of Finn and Prospect. Is that true? And if so, could we consider making Warfield a one way street? So street lights are one thing that is not under the jurisdiction of the DPW. Um, I, I'm not sure where you would have heard that from. Um, I, I, that may be part of the Mass DOT project. I see Councillor Quinlan. Um, I'm not sure if you were waving at me, Councillor. He looks like he is. I'm gonna. I, I'm going to unmute you. Um, I, uh, I, I just. Uh, I wonder if Terry means um, the. Um, the stoplight at the corner of State and Finn, but uh, Finn and Prospect, I don't think is getting a stoplight. Do you mean stoplight or streetlight? I just want to make sure that I, we're- I just heard um, in the back and forth with the emails that there was going to be a, a, a traffic light at Finn and Prospect. Oh yeah, no, there is there is a traffic light going at State and Finn, not okay. at Prospect. Okay. That's where it belongs. Okay. I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I thought you meant streetlight like a, like a, sorry, I totally misunderstood uh, uh, that. Uh, streetlights okay. actually are under our jurisdiction or stoplights rather, but, uh, but not streetlights. So sorry, I misunderstood your question. Okay. One way. Okay. Um, what about the one way? Okay, so one way streets um, require a very intensive engineering analysis and traffic counts that um, then have to be submitted to MassDOT for approval to create a one way street. So there's certain warrants that have to be hit um, in, in order for a one way to be implemented in terms of traffic volumes and turning movements. Um, and that's a fairly significant engineering study that would have to be undertaken and and the results of that may show that warrants are not hit and that it, it's, it, it shouldn't be a one way. Um, you don't necessarily get to control the outcome of that engineering study. It just sort of is, you know, it, the outcome is what it is and then you have to abide by the outcome. So at this time, there are no plans to create a one way street. Here. Okay, I have two more questions. Um, what about one side parking? And is there a comparable street that you've already done in the city that we could all take a look at to see what it's gonna look like? Um, one-sided parking would be something that would have to be created by ordinance that would be submitted to the Transportation and Parking Commission. And what we would do is we would assess, you know, the street width and what we see, you know, we'd have to put down traffic counters and see what we've got for volumes and, and see, um, you know, if that request was actually warranted. So there is an ordinance process that that would have to go through and ultimately be approved by council. Um, so that's, it, you know, that can take a little bit of time uh, to get through that process, but it's certainly something, you know, if the neighborhood requested it, we could analyze further. Um, in terms of a, an equivalent street that has been done, you know, our focus over the past several years has been these main feeder streets into the city, like Glendale Road and North Farms Road and Bridge Road that were just in, in deplorable condition. And we are now branching out into the neighborhoods. Um, so you folks are really the beneficiaries of of you know our ability to branch out into the neighborhoods, um, and so it, you know at this point there are certainly side streets that that have been paved you know over the years. We did a, a small street off of Glendale Road, but you know every street's a little bit different. Um, so I, you know that no, there's really no equivalent that I can okay. refer you to. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next is Francine. And, and I'll just mention we have about uh, 20 minutes left here. Um, so just to be respectful of everybody's time, I wanna make sure I have four people who have their hands up. So I just wanna make sure we have time to address everybody's comments. Um, so just please, uh, let's all keep that in mind. Okay. But I have been waiting a long time. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I have a comment and some questions. I do not live on Warfield Street. Those trees, those cherry trees on Warfield Street are probably the thing I like most in Northampton. I've brought many people from around the city to see them. They're a treasure. And I was frankly horrified to hear the city's gonna cut them down. Now I hear what Rich is saying, uh, but one question I have, which is overreaching is, is there any process by which citizens could change the outcome? Are you just here to justify what you're doing? Or is there any way that citizens could stop the trees 
from being cut down? Or is this just a waste of our time, basically? So it, it was requested of, by the neighborhood that um, we have a, a meeting and that's why we're here. And I sent a notification to the neighborhood because um, that is my obligation as, as a public employee to engage the public and to make sure we're communicating clearly. Um, we do listen, um, regardless of, of what people may think. Um, we have was, had... Was there any discussion of this before the whole plan was made? And I, because I live three blocks away, I did not know this was happening. This is a resource, not just for Warfield Street, but for the whole city. And I, someone told me there's a, there's a Massachusetts state law that if you take down, I don't know if this is true, if you take down a tree, you have to have a public hearing, you have a, a right to a public hearing. This is not a, I assume you're not assuming this is a public hearing because there's no, there was no um, publicity about it for the rest of the city. Yeah, so we're familiar with Mass General Law Chapter 87, which governs public shade trees, um, and Rich is an appointed official under MGL 87. This is a road construction project. No tree hearing is required. It is exempt, and that has been ruled by the uh, city solicitor. So there is there any process by which citizens can object to this process and stop it? So we are listening to everybody's comments. And I will have a conversation with my supervisor about how we are going to proceed. Okay, so I have a couple of questions that you might wanna consider. So first of all, Rich, uh, is Rich still here? Yeah. Uh, okay, so when you assessed the condition of the trees, mm -hmm. first of all, if there were no project going forward and our goal was to keep these trees as long as possible, is there a strategy that we could be using? Forget about this construction project, just in terms, I assume you're an arborist, is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So assume there was no construction project going on and we, to preserve this incredible resource that our city has, we wanted to do something to save these trees. What would we do? So, so the, the issue is, is that the trees have really reached the end of their life cycle, unfortunately. It's very rare to see a cherry tree this large in a very small tree belt actually thrive. It's like the one at the very end at Seven Warfield is actually still in, you know, it's in fair condition. The other trees, unfortunately, are so loaded with decay, internal decay, that you can't stop it. You can't stop the decay. I mean, um, they, the, all these trees are in a, um, a level of retrenchment, which means that um, retrenchment is like hypothermia. When a human gets hypothermia, you know, your limbs and your arms get very cold and your, your brain tells your body to preserve your biomass, your internal core. Well, these trees are kind of in that same process. And what happens when they go through retrenchment is that the tree recognizes that um, it can't support its whole canopy. So what it does is it basically sloughs off its own parts. So you will see like one year, a tree limb will be three feet long. The next year, the tree limb will be two feet long. Without us even touching it, the tree is just registering that it needs to actually get, shed that because it can no longer support it. So, you know, you, you could do a, uh, a mass pruning of these to actually drop them down. Um, but the problem with that is that the canopies are so small already that there has to be at least there has to be at least 30% live crown ratio to support a tree of that size, which means if you look at the whole tree as 100%, 30% of that 100% has to be canopy. Anything less than that, the tree will not survive the pruning cuts. That's the other thing too. Right. So, yeah. so, okay, so, okay, it's metastatic cancer, I hear you. <laughs> um, how, what is, Without this project, what is the life expectancy of these trees? It's really hard to say. I mean, you know, there's another part of this that you have to look at. And this is what, when I go to look at a tree, let's say it's on another street that has a whole bunch of chronic issues. Um, you have to evaluate everything. You have to evaluate the, the tree's rooting space. Um, what, what targets surround the tree? Because don't forget, this is an urban environment. 
So targets are cars, uh, houses, people walking underneath them, um, fixed objects like uh, people's picnic tables, fire hydrants. So you have to look at the overall assessment of everything. So in order to, to determine how to cut a tree down and when the right time is, is I take into all, I take in all, all those factors plus the condition of the tree. And um, those trees, it's hard to say how long they'll live for, um, but they're, it's fair for, gonna be for a short time because some of them have really severe decay. And the other thing too, is that the cylinder- I'm Sure, but I don't know what you mean by sure. So you say, even give me a range. What's the so longest those trees could live for? Maybe another five years, maybe. But I, I, I don't know. You could have a catastrophic windstorm, even though, or heavy rainfall. They can't. The trunks have the, the trunks have holes in them, so it's sort of like it's like a pipe. You have a pipe that's a cylinder. When you cut the side of the cylinder open, now the pipe becomes pliable. Well, the trunk is the same way. So I, you know, it's again, it's hard to put a time frame on them, but they are exceedingly. The, the decay is worse uh, than it was two years ago when the last time I was there to inspect one. Yeah. So I just, I, I just need to jump in here for a second. I'm sorry. So it, it's quarter of, I have three more people who wish to speak. Um, so I, I do need to just move on. And I, I just want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to, to say what they feel like they need to say before we need to end. So uh, I would just urge you to reconsider doing the sidewalk on the other side of the street or doing another street this year and let us have at least another year of these trees. Thank you. Okay, next is Reed. It's go telling ahead, me, oh, now I am out. Yep. Okay. There you go, go ahead, uh, Reed. So like Francine, I am not a Warfield uh, resident, uh, but I can see Warfield from my front yard. I live on Aldridge Street. And I agree with Francine, these are a treasure for more than the 10 or so houses on the street. Uh, I walk my dog all over the city in the morning, and there are a lot of streets that have sidewalks to nowhere, like the sidewalk in question, it just ends. It doesn't complete a destination from point A to point B. It goes and stops in somebody's driveway and then you're walking across grass or, or across the street without a crosswalk. Uh, there are many streets much busier that have no sidewalk, at least on one side and sometimes on either side. Enhanced pothole filling uh, is not rebuilding and gives these trees and this street time to have um, a reassessment with, with real time. Uh, instead of 10 days notice uh, stuck on their doors that their street is gonna be changed in this massive way. And the people who aren't on the street who happen to find out about this going on uh, this meeting here, uh, a, a chance to weigh in. It, it seems like if we are really serving the public, we should be interested in what the public has to say before we decide what we are gonna do to a public way. And I'll stop because I know we're, we're running out of time. Thank you, sorry, I was talking and I was muted. Um, thank you, Reed. Um, next is Cecilia. Hi, I'm uh, Cecilia Shiner. I live at 11 Warfield Place and I have two cherry trees in front of my house. Um, so why we, my husband and I both spend a time talking to Dan McGuire, who's the one who planted the cherry trees. He still owns six Warfield Place. And you know, he made a good point. This is really like a once in a generation change to this tree, to the street. And I think it's worth consideration of all the, the variables. I'm very upset to be losing trees. We're the sunny side of the street. <laughs> like if you're talking about global warming, we don't have other, these are the largest trees in proximity to our, our house. And I feel like it deserves some more thought. Um, also, I, I'd love an opportunity to kind of talk about later on, I know we don't have time today to talk about the other issues with our street, 
Dan is very concerned with parking. He has a hard time getting in and out of his driveway because we have so much demand for street parking. He has to extend his driveway. So he's concerned that when the streets rebuilt, he won't have the ability to get out of his driveway um, because of, of cars parked across the street. Um, he's also slated to get more trees added to his land and he does not want them. He doesn't want more trees. He's older and maintaining them is work for him. He doesn't have the money to hire someone to maintain them. And so you're adding trees on the side that like at least Dan does not want them and you're taking them away from our side. It feels totally imbalanced. And I have the youngest people living on Warfield Place in my house. I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. I'd love for them to want to live on Warfield Place in the future. And I'll tell you, when you take down all the trees, almost all the trees on our side of the street, it, it diminishes the whole street and especially the north side of the street. So, you know, it's heartbreaking and I, and I understand there's issues with this trees, but let's work out a plan for like, you know, the, you say you're planning for the future, but the future with less trees, with trees on one side doesn't count. It doesn't count when you're on this side of the street. So. Okay, thank you. All right, and Sharon. Okay. Hi, thanks. Um, I live on the other side of the street and uh, on the corner of Warfield and Prospect. And um, of course I agree about the cherry trees. I'm one of their fans that takes pictures every year. I have all already, uh, already said that I don't want another tree on my side of the street but now I'm also getting a little confused. It sounds like you're going to be moving this, the street into more into my yard. I've been concerned about the idea of that my sidewalk is going to be gone. Because if I have people uh, living upstairs that have to get to the driveway and they come out the front door, which is their entrance, they can't get to the, to the driveway into the backyard unless they walk down the sidewalk. Or if the sidewalk is gone, then they would have to walk in the street. Um, which is impossible during snow, snow conditions. So I wasn't sure why you had to rip out the sidewalk on the other side of the street, unless what I hear now is that you're gonna move the whole street over more or something. Could you answer that? And I- uh... Yeah, the, the street is not going to be moved. The, the street is staying exactly where it is in its current footprint and the sidewalk um, where the cherry trees are is staying exactly as is. The, the outside edge of that sidewalk is not being moved to encroach into anybody's property whatsoever. So nothing is being shifted. The reason we are removing the sidewalk on the other side of the street on what it sounds like is your side of the street um, is because we are creating a tree belt on that side of the street so that we can successfully plant and propagate trees there away from the utility wires where, where they actually have some room to move and grow in a healthy way, not so that they grow, you know, for 20 years and then die because, you know, they're hitting utility wires above them or. So let me say that there's three houses on that side of the street. Mine, Danny's and Liz right yours on the corner. And I don't want any more trees because I already have trees planted there. Dan, Danny does definitely not want any more trees and Liz, no more trees. We have trees and, um, and I wanna keep the sidewalk because the sidewalk is kind of uh, um, required at my house to get from the front to the back. The, the, my house and the driveway and the backyard all run along Warfield. So I have a big chunk of Warfield even though my address is on Prospect. That makes sense. I, I need the sidewalks to maneuver. So it, it so I think it, at this point, and I, I hear everything you're saying. So I, I think at this point, um, you know, again, since it's it, it's about five minutes to three here, Councillor Quinlan is with us, um, and I just like to give him an, an opportunity to to jump in here if if he has any comments. Um, so we're gonna I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna just unmute you. Go ahead, Councillor. Yes. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, boy, there's an awful lot to consider here. Uh, you know, I know that with with many of you, um, there was a little bit of an email chain 
uh, last week. Uh, and so I, I read all of your emails and, and now I hear you're voicing a lot of those same concerns here uh, today. Uh, one of the hardest parts about this is as I you know, talked to the DPW director twice about this project and, and we exchanged emails and I saw the plans, you know, what, what the DPW director is saying here is the, the road is in poor condition, so it needs to be redone. If you're gonna do the road, then you have to do the sidewalk. Uh, if you're going to do the sidewalk, we should really consider those trees that are at the end of their life. And so it all kind of added up to me. And I wrote this in the email to many of you. It made a lot of sense to me. The whole process seems logical. Um, the emotional side of it of losing those trees is, is sad. Um, but, you know, I think knowing that those trees are, are going to be gone sooner rather than later is, uh, you know, is also a mitigating factor here to, to, to this project moving forward. Um, it's not, it's not, um, you know, Maureen Carney, who was the counselor before me in Ward 1, said the hardest part of this of this uh, being a city counselor is when you're listening to people tell you what they don't want, uh, but you don't, you know, but but it still has to happen. And, and I have to say that, that there's no question that's one of the most stressful parts of this, this whole thing. So I think you've all made some very good points here. And, and you know, I trust uh, the DPW director and the tree warden uh, as our experts, you know, I mean, when we when we mention uh, certain certain things, they they really, um, they really are the experts here. So so I trust them to make this decision, uh, whether I, I fully agree or fully disagree is, is you know, is, is not necessarily fully my call, right? And, and so I trust them to make that decision, um, knowing that, that it may not be the decision that I, that I totally want, but it is, it is kind of how a city, a city has to operate. So I'm hoping that everyone um, will understand that um, and, and will find the right choice here. Uh, that said, um, you, know, uh, you know, I mentioned this too, I, I'm in receipt of, of emails and phone calls on pretty much a weekly basis of people um, you know, asking me to help them try to fix their roads. And so, again, one of the reasons that I was kind of enthusiastic about this at first was, was because of that fact. I know there are a lot of people out there on streets that, that need resurfacing and help, and, and they're not getting it this year. And, you know, so that was another thing. Um, and that, that's really pretty much all I have to say uh, at this point. Um, uh, thank everyone for attending, of course, and thank you to the DPW director and uh, the tree warden and, and Cindy for, for putting this together to, to listen to the, to the residents here. Thank you, Councillor, for those comments. Um, so, I, what it, seeing as it is nearly three o'clock, I, I have a, a couple of parting comments here. I, I work directly for the mayor, so one of the questions in the chat was who my supervisor is. So, I work for the mayor, and I'm appointed by him. Um, it, we have conducted this meeting at your request, but primarily because it's important for us to hear what you have to say. We try not to make decisions in a vacuum. We are responsible for 160 miles of roadway in the city. We try to make good decisions. We try to spend tax money wisely. We try to do the right thing and we really care what people think. So, um, you know, this is not a, uh, this is not for show. Um, I intend to have a conversation with the mayor about everything that everyone has sent here, the requests that have been made of us. Um, and again, we control multi-million dollars worth of paving and, and infrastructure here, and we want to do right by everyone within the city limits. Um, so I, I appreciate everybody's comments. Um, and you know we will um, we will try to determine what the best way to proceed is here. Um, but obviously, construction season is upon us, and we need to make a move. I will conclude by saying that the, the there is no way to work around these trees. Either the street gets paved, and we proceed as I described in my letter, um, or we don't do anything. Um, and, and those are the two options. There is no third option. Um, you know, it, it, there are a lot of people in the city who require services of us and ask services of us. We have done the best design that we thought we could for a Warfield Place. Um, and at this point, there, there is no redesign 
um, and it is, um, you know, we, we will proceed as we have, we have said, um, or we will not proceed. Um, and, and those are the two options. So I, I just want to make sure that everybody's clear in understanding um, that at this point, um, construction season is upon us. So we are not able to redesign this project and, and you know, do it this August. Um, so that's a, kind of my concluding comments and we will um, be certain to, to be in touch with everybody um, a, a, about a way forward. So I thank everybody uh, for their time and for their attention and for their comments. And you're more than welcome to um, you know, email or call uh, if, if you want to discuss further. So with that, thank you very much to all.